I think Damien really outlined extremely well kind of all the you know exactly what the housing crisis is today and exactly what it looks like today and exactly kind of just the depth of how, how it exists across society and how you know all, all all the symptoms of it at the moment and I, I think what I want to talk about today is how that the situation we're in is not an accident it's not a, it's not the result of um, you know bad policy decisions it's not the result of um, it's not the result of kind of policies going wrong. Well, I want to, you know, this is the result of 40 years of economic and social policy that has deliberately empowered the wealthy in society at the expense of working people. And, uh, you know, this, this, you know, this goes back to the Thatcher government. It actually goes back much further than that in terms of the ideas and where it came from. And I want to talk a bit about that tonight and a bit kind of try and understand where this came from and how we got to where we're at. And this idea is, is and, and then I want to talk about you know, the moment we're in now, uh, what's happened in the Labour Party, Corbyn, um, Momentum, I'm, in, I'm part of Manchester Momentum, um, and um, yeah, I've been, you know, involved in, the, in both leadership elections and for Corbyn, and, and why that's so important, but also, because I'm involved in Greater Manchester Housing Action as well, I want to talk a bit about the role of kind of groups outside the Labour Party and how they can, you know, how important they are as well to what is going to be in a massive struggle in the, in the years to come. Um, so, to start off, like, what, what is this idea of neoliberalism? So, neoliberalism kind of, kind of came out of a, a set of thinkers just after the Second World War, uh, and it kind of, it, 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 the ideas came, were around this idea of free markets, this idea that the, the problems of society, or the best way to run a society would be to leave uh, everything to, the, to, to markets to sort out. And it was also about kind of individualism, so it was about kind of, you know, the, the best kind of person in society is an entrepreneur, the best kind of person in society is an individual who kind of navigates society and, and tries to make money and, and, and that if we can just maximise society in their interests, that will make a better society. And you get this idea called trickle down and how, um, you know, if we, if, we have, if we create lots of wealth, that will trickle down to lots of people. And what, what, what this really uh, kind of led to and, and, and what this actually looked like was basically the state uh, was, was re rebuilt basically in the interests of the wealthy and, and this was quite a, uh, a deliberate uh, a deliberate kind of um, a deliberate move basically so after the Second World War after the construction of the welfare state uh, strong trade unions um, you get you, 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 basically this is not to the interests of people who hold a lot of wealth because workers start to demand better conditions, better pay, this cuts into their wealth, but also high taxation, a decent welfare state cuts into kind of the, the wealth of the very wealthiest. And what, and what they, they plan basically in the aftermath of the war is a, is a fight back, is a, is, a, is a sense that they need to, you know, they've lost, they've lost out in society towards trying to, you know, they, their interests have basically been defeated by, you know, welfare state, by strong trade unions. And, and what, what they plan is basically how to kind of shift everything back in their direction. And what they do is they start to create lots of ideas and they start to create lots of policies and they start to build networks um, and they start to create think tanks and groups like these in the aftermath of the Second World War. And what they're doing is they're waiting for a moment where they can kind of move and they can kind of suddenly take control and kind of get their ideas out there and start to shift the common sense of how to run a society. Uh, and this kind of opportunity arises in the 1970s where, you, where there are kind of various economic crises and what you see is these, these, these groups, these neoliberals, start to basically say, our ideas are the solution to the crisis. And you see, you know, the Conservative Party is taken over by a uh, kind of hard-right faction within the party, which is led by Thatcher, um, which kind of is actually in opposition to traditional elements in the party. And basically, you see them take advantage of the situation. And then in the 80s, you get, basically, the Thatcher government in the UK, but all around the world, you start to see these kind of governments, and what they start to do is they start to pass policies that basically attack trade unions. So the miners' strike in the UK, kind of restrictive trade union laws in, in the early 80s, is kind of paralleled around the world in the US, trade unions come under attack, and that these are attacked because they're the kind of main political and social opposition to their policies. But also they start to pass uh, more policies to kind of deregulate the economy to privatise public services um, and in housing especially you can look at things like right to buy which was you know three million council homes were passed from public ownership into private hands this is a real example of how 
you know, what, what, what these people did when they got into power was they used the state power to basically privatise and enrich the wealthy who, you know, and, and, and you, you see housing become deregulated, you see um, in the mid 80s they passed laws around making it easier to get a buy to let mortgage, making it making the minimum tenancy on a private rented home shorter to six months which is um, the shortest in Europe in the UK, so a minimum renting period is six months which makes it very easy for a landlord to kick someone out and raise the rent, so it makes it a lot more flexible for landlords uh, it makes it easier to basically make a profit out of housing. You also see deregulation of mortgage markets, so it's much easier to get a mortgage. So basically that's this housing market bubble uh, that you get from the kind of 90s onwards. A, a lot of credit gets pumped into the economy uh, through mortgages, um, which basically turns housing into like an asset that's kind of traded and, and, and um, basically enriches certain people in society, but makes it more difficult to get a home if you actually really need it. So housing becomes much more of an asset, something that's traded, something that's bought, rather than a basic social good, which is kind of what council housing was, that anyone should be able to be homed. That's the sign of a decent society. So these kind of ideas, this kind of way of running society, that private is good, public is bad, um, you should kind of deregulate, you should allow private businesses to, to kind of trade, to have free trade. These ideas basically become a common sense from the 80s onwards and New Labour uh, kind of basically continues this kind of work and Thatcher herself <coughs> said that, you know, what happened in the Labour Party and the, the, the kind of phenomenon of New Labour was her greatest achievement because basically New Labour were no longer op offering, you know, Labour was no longer offering any alternative to what the Tories had done in the 80s and in many ways was kind of continuing some of the same policies. So things like PFI, uh, is a really good example of how um, <coughs> private markets, a private solution to kind of so, uh, public services was seen as like the way forward. Um, PFI obviously when you're building a PFI hospital rather than building it in-house you, you kind of uh, get uh, you, you get the credit on the private market, you pay interest. In the long run it ends up being a lot more expensive for, for the state. Uh, in the short run it looks cheaper but basically it creates these kind of cash cows for, for private capital at the expense of the public purse, at the expense of the taxpayer. So it's, you, you see these kind of ideas, you see these kind of, um, you know, you see this idea that like it's a private sector solution um, is kind of kind of carried on throughout the noughties um, in housing as well, so like labour in the early, in the early noughties under, under Blair and Brown. Uh, do a lot of stock transfers of council housing into the pri into housing association, which uh, Damon talked about as kind of, you know, this is an arm's length thing. You don't actually have democratic control. Um, <clears throat> it's also, yeah, so it, it becomes housing associations as opposed to council housing, and, and this is all the kind of continuation of these policies that this and this way of running society that dates back all the way to what I said earlier about this kind of post-war um, attempt to shift back on like the welfare state. So, you know, that's why this moment we're in is really interesting and that's why this moment we're in is really important because what's happened over the last two years is that the leadership of the Labour Party has actually broken with this kind of model of thinking and this way of running society and, it's, and, the, and the leadership of the Labour Party has been, become left wing again. Uh, and this is like a hugely, uh, you know, this hasn't happened arguably since the beginning of the Labour Party, but certainly not since Michael Foote in the 80s. Uh, and it marks a real break, and I think it's really clear now that there are two very different uh, kind of policy platforms and ways of running society and political philosophies on offer to people, and, and be because of Corbyn, because of what's happened in the Labour Party, because of what's happened in the trade unions who have moved left since the kind of mid noughties and because of wider society moving left as well. So, basically I think you know, we have, we're at a massive point of opportunity uh, and a massive point of opportunity in terms of trying to roll back, trying to move beyond uh, and, and the, the kind of policy framework that we've seen over the last 40 years, which has resulted in the crisis we now see. But, uh, you know, what, what I think is really important to stress is this is not going to be an easy fight. And, and if we think back to where the last 40 years have come from and the kind of interests that have, have profited out of this, so if you look at inequality today, it's higher than it ever has been in the UK. Uh, I found a stat earlier about the top 10% of the UK holds 45% of all wealth in the country. 
um, and globally the situation is even worse. Um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of powerful interests at stake in maintaining the status quo, in not only maintaining it but accelerating it. So I think what we need to be really aware of is that, you know, we're all we're almost just at the beginning. So we've had that break with the kind of the neoliberal ideologies of, of policy. You know, the the Labour leadership now under Corbyn and McDonnell is op offering a real alternative, a real break with the status quo with with neoliberalism you know it, it wants to bring you know uh, services back in house it wants to expand the public sector it wants to radically change ownership in this country uh, and this is all massively welcomed but i think <clears throat> you know this is not going to be an easy fight winning the election when it does come is almost going to be the beginning and i think this is where kind of what i wanted to talk about the role of housing movements specifically, and I think housing movements will sit alongside, you know, trade unions, will sit alongside, you know, other, you know, progressive think tanks, progressive media organisations. We need a whole ecology, a whole kind of network of progressive groups, of, of left-wing groups that are aligning with the Labour Party leadership strategy, which are willing to criticise it, as Damien said, like, that's really important, willing to push it to move further left, but ultimately wanting to strategically support it because... This is, a, this is a massive opportunity, this is a massive moment of, of radical shift and I think if we need to realise this and we need to realise, you know, I'm, I, I kind of like almost see this because I'm involved in housing stuff that is outside Labour and then I'm involved in momentum inside Labour but I can really see, you know, in, in Manchester, what's been happening in Manchester is a really great example. It's actually really works when you've got these great alliances between people working in labour and people who are working out of labour and, and, and these people sometimes speak to different audiences and these people, you know, in a media context, sometimes GMHA will be asked for a comment, whereas they'd never go to like a, an internal Labour Party activist. So if you have all these different groups kind of on the same page, speaking the same language, it present it creates a lot of power for our movement and it creates a lot of um, up, you know, it creates a, a broad front, and that's exactly what we need. Because if you look at what happened in the in the 70s <clears throat> with neoliberalism, is that it wasn't just Margaret Thatcher leading the Conservative Party. There was a whole network of think tanks, of media people, of of column, columnists in the Times, of of kind of people, you know, cultural figures who were all kind of saying the same kind of thing, who were creating this sense of a common sense that, you know, what Thatcher was doing was right. And I think that's exactly what we need now, only the other side. <laughs> so um, that's kind of just what I wanted to say, um, is that housing movements really need to fit in with the Labour, sh Labour Party. They need to see that the Labour Party and the Labour leadership of um, Corbyn and McDonnell is an ally, that they need to see themselves as part of this broader movement. And I think one really good example maybe um, of housing policy that's been pushed by housing movements um, Labour housing policy that's been pushed is around Section 21. So Section 21 is the clause of the Housing Act, like 1986 or something. Uh, in 1988, uh, yeah, which basically means landlords can um, evict a, t a tenant in their property without any real reason. Um, and this, you know, this really wasn't particularly on the agenda until this summer, where it was kind of being pushed by basically a coalition of housing groups. Um, around, uh, which was like Generation Rent, Acorn, the New Economics Foundation and uh, London Renters Union. And they were basically pushing that this, you know, we need to abolish Section 21, that's a real key demand. And then at conference this year, you see John Healy, who's announced that part of Labour's policy now will be to abolish Section 21. So I think this is a really good example of how movements applying pressure and people within the left of the party applying pressure on the leadership can push the direction in a much more progressive kind of direction. Um, and it works both ways. So another thing that John Healy announced was that they'll create this pot of funding for renters' unions, which I think is a really, really important um, thing moving forward because that then empowers kind of a social force within society around private renting to be more powerful, to have, have greater power in society, to, to push labour, but also to kind of act, as I was saying, as this kind of broader uh, movement for a more progressive and more equal society. So I kind of really wanted to leave it there. Um, obviously, GMHA is kind of doing a lot of work in 
Manchester and Salford, and then in the new year we, we've got we want to be basically broadening broadening our networks across Greater Manchester. So we're going to be working in Stockport and Bolton, um, and probably maybe in Oldham. So I can talk much more about that if, if people have questions. But I, that was kind of the point I wanted to make that you know we're at a very very special time. We're at a very a time of great opportunity. Uh, we're at a time of kind of a lot of hard work. And electing Labour is going to be basically just the beginning. And after that, we really need to be thinking, if you're inside the party, how are we talking to people outside the party? How are we kind of all on the same page? How are we, at the end, kind of working on the same, the, working for the same goal, which is basically to address inequality, inequality in this country and to create a fairer society. Um, so thank you very much. I hope that was <laughs> Thanks very much, Isaac. That was uh, very interesting. Uh, before we go on to to um, Yasmin, can you just tell us just some of the things that Great Manchester Housing Action does? Um, yeah. um, what what activities, what campaigns you have, and if there's any way for people to get involved or to find out more, how how can we do so? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so our kind of work is around three main areas. So we want to educate people around the housing crisis and its causes, and I think one of the things that is really important is to kind of what I was saying, that the housing crisis is the product of a structural <laughs> problem. It's a, it's a system in crisis that's causing the housing crisis. It's not necessarily, you know, a bad policy. And I think that's kind of one of the things that we're really keen on. Another thing is um, <clears throat> kind of networking. So there's loads of, you know, when GMHO was formed, there were different housing campaigns in the city. Uh, since then, it's, it's kind of grown even more. And I think one of our, what we want to do is basically anyone who's working in housing or interested in housing, trying to pull them all together so that basically people aren't repeating themselves, but also so everyone kind of knows what everyone else is doing uh, because we're kind of stronger if we're networked. Um, and part of that role we've seen has basically been uh, trying to create, you know, one of the things we've been doing in, in Manchester Labour is, is supporting left activists within Labour with like policies and arguments and ideas, which then they can take to like their branch branches and kind of use uh, against, you know, not against councils, but used to question councils, to question policy, to be more informed. And that kind of role of kind of connecting, you know, connecting your academic who might have, you know, all, all these great ideas with your, your Labour Party branch member, with your, with your kind of homeless activist, basically pulling people together because we're stronger if we're sharing knowledge and sharing skills and also just kind of aware of what everyone's doing. And then the final thing <coughs> is trying to create platforms where ordinary people can basically issue demands uh, and, 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 and share their grievances to, to powerful kind of, um, to the powerful, to like local government basically. Um, so we've been organising, <coughs> on that we've been organising this thing called the Renters Forum where we've got private renters to kind of issue demands and talk about issues in the private rented sector and, and a, kind of issue a set of demands to Manchester City Council and, and, and kind of then have a dialogue with them. So basically to try and organise, you know, uh, power with citizens, basically. Um, and then just generally campaigning, supporting allies within Labour, outside of Labour, using our social media platform to kind of show all the good work that we can do. Thank you.